The first major content update for Enshrouded is now here. Inside it are a ton of new changes to the game. Things like some new dungeons that are going to be very challenging for us to go into. We've got a new NPC survivor to bring to our base, some new crafting options, new weapons, building blocks, furniture, the ability to sit down in our chairs, and a whole bunch of other stuff. So in this video, I figured it was worth it to go over the patch notes and cover everything that is going to be changing with this new update. Now, the developers did put out a video highlighting some of the more bigger features of this patch, and I highly recommend you guys go and check that one out because it's a really good video. So for the highlights, we've got each biome has a new playable area called the Hollow Halls, where enemies and challenges are corresponding to the level of the biome. These new daunting dungeons come with a multitude of new challenges and exciting rewards. So these are the new, I guess, major dungeons that were teased. And from the looks of it, these are going to be pretty hard and there's going to be tons of content for us to do. They look like they are pretty big, so there's going to be tons of rooms and areas for us to explore. I assume there's going to be puzzles and things like that for us to solve. And then of course, it's going to be very tricky so they even said in their video that you definitely don't want to be doing this by yourself it's going to be very punishing so you're probably going to have to go in there with a group We've got new quests leading through the new content. You're going to have to talk to the alchemist to get started. So obviously that's going to be how we get our segue into these hollowed halls. The alchemist is probably going to have us head over there and we're going to be doing quests involving those dungeons. And obviously we've got new enemies that are going to be awaiting us in the depths of these dungeons. In the video it showed off some new looking monsters so that's going to be really fun to experiment with and just see how tricky they are. A new survivor can be discovered in these halls and with him is going to be unlocking some new crafting stations with some new recipes. And that's really interesting. I can't wait to see what exactly this crafting NPC is going to provide us with. It kind of feels like we already have, I guess, all of our avenues kind of covered. So I almost wonder if this guy is going to be more for like, I don't know, enchanting our equipment or something like that. That would be really cool. We of course have tons of new weapons, building blocks, furniture, decorative props, and a bunch of other stuff that's gonna be found. I personally cannot wait to see what kind of weapons these are gonna be. It looks like they have solved the 60 Hertz issue, so now we're gonna actually be able to increase that, so that way our gameplay is gonna be a lot more smoother, and it's gonna be less choppier, and you know, it's not gonna be like Dragon's Dogma. Emily the Farmer now offers potted plants to everyone who wants to add a little extra color to their porch. Dilt the Carpenter now offers a new set of round doors and windows, so that way you guys can make your hobbit homes way more cozier than they were before. The seedbed workstation now is going to allow for growing additional tree seedlings, so you guys are going to be able to create way more trees and just way more vegetation in your playable area. And here's another one that I really wanted to see happen, and it looks like we've got it now. So players can now sit on furniture. That's awesome. I cannot wait to actually sit down and just relax, you know? The town of Willow Crush in the Revel Woods has been completely revamped, so that's going to be really cool to see. That is probably where I'm going to have my next base set up in the next playthrough. On to technical improvements and stability. Updating the game on Steam has been reworked to allow faster updates in the future. Previously, every update, no matter how big, resulted in the patching of the complete 30 gigabyte game data on the hard drive. Now only the affected areas will be patched. This change requires the complete download this one time and will only be noticeably faster for future updates. Save data stability has been improved further. As an additional security layer, the game now automatically creates backups of the saved data in periodic intervals. Should a save file be unreadable for any reason, a previous version will be loaded. And this is a really smart feature for them to add. Definitely is going to save a lot of people's save files. Unfortunately, mine is not one of them. Rendering and performance. Performance has been improved further. As always, performance and stability will remain a main focus while moving forward. And it definitely looks like that is a big thing with them because from their video, you can clearly see the game is playing leaps and bounds better than it was before. Support for Nvidia Reflex has been added. It can be switched on and off in the graphical settings if the used hardware is supported for the feature. Added a new setting to the graphical settings to control the sharpness of the image, added a new setting to switch contract shadows on and off, and they added an option to switch off additional micro spiders. The big spiders are still there though, piloted by tiny spiders inside their brain. That's pretty funny. I, I love these little like kind of anecdotes they add here. Moving on to gameplay. Added more shields into the progression. This one's really good because it definitely felt like the game was lacking for finding a good shield in those early levels. The multi-shot skill no longer consumes multiple arrows when special arrows are selected. 
This made the skill too expensive overall. This is really good. I love how they just keep adding more and more quality of life stuff for the Archer gameplay because yeah, I was just, I'm still am a proponent of, I really wish it wasn't such a pain in the butt having to farm, I guess, arrows. Updated the functionality of the leech stat. It now has a chance to convert a percentage of the damage dealt to enemies into health for the player. And this is a really good change. It definitely felt like the leech stat was kind of bugged. So having an actual like leech build may be viable now. The player's skill, Bloodletting, is no longer triggered by Light Burst and Acid Cone. Fixed an issue that caused too high critical damage for the Acid Cone spell. Well, there is the nerf. Rip Acid Cone spell players. It's definitely a warranted nerf. You know, granted I'm someone who was abusing the heck out of it. It was just doing way too much damage, so it's, it's good to see that this is getting, I guess, reined in. And incorrect consumption of mana was fixed when using both skills, Begone and Sonora. Similarly, Begone combined with traps no longer causes mana consumption. Fix an issue with Blood Rage caused by traps. Fixed incorrect application of stun in multiplayer when using the terror skill. The companion created by the Necromancer skill now follows the player around more actively. Fixed an issue where the updraft skill could be triggered multiple times per glider flight. You're not supposed to be able to fly forever. No, you're not Jonathan Livingstone Siegel. The skill breach is no longer triggered with arrows. Healing another player with water aura no longer backfires as damage when the player has counter strike. That one's actually pretty funny. The skill Shell Shock now works as described, which we can all agree is probably for the best. Warden and Tower Aura no longer trigger while the player is down. When successfully overpowering enemies, the Merciless attack now can be triggered faster. This one's a really good change, and I feel like it's just one step closer towards making, I guess, the melee combat in this game a little bit more smoother. Small tweaks to durability of the various weapon types. Melee weapons lose durability slightly slower, Wands slightly faster, improved durability for rarer items. And this is another nerf to like the wand playstyle in this game. Wanding was already just incredibly good and I already feel like the wand, I guess durability was just terrible anyways. That's why I always ran around with like two extra in my, uh, my hotbar just because of how quickly the durability on them goes down. So it's gonna be really interesting to see just how much they've tweaked this, but yeah, this is gonna, this is gonna feel really bad. Reaching ledges at the intended jump height is slightly more forgiving. That's another good one. Fixed an issue where arrow and spell ammunition couldn't be cycled properly when using the Q and left trigger shortcut with certain items selected in the action bar. Fixed an issue where the action bar and ammunition selection could skip slots on higher frame rates. Fixed an issue where eternal spells could be used up when simultaneously trying to throw explosive powder balls. Fixed instances where sound caused by skills or enemies could be heard by everyone in the party regardless of distance. This one was a crazy bug and really annoying. I definitely ran into this one a couple of times when I was playing in multiplayer. Fixed an issue with the sickle scythe that sometimes gets stuck in the wall after teleporting. Loot from flying enemies spawns correctly on the ground now. Enemies now better find their way through the door frames and similar spaces. Enemies and wildlife now have a higher resolution grid for pathfinding, so that's going to be good. They're going to be a little bit more smoother when trying to chase you through the terrain. Improved steering behavior for enemies and wildlife. Improved player camera behavior so it behaves less erratic when interacting with enemies. Improved enemy jump behavior. <laughs> you thought you were safe? Think again. Enemies can now block wand projectiles. That is crazy. Yeah, that, that again, that is just another... They're, do, they're doing all these little minor nerfs to like casters and wands. Yeah, this is gonna be really interesting to, to see how this all plays out after these changes. Wand projectiles no longer auto-target bear traps. Using the wand to destroy prompts is easier now. Before, the homing feature of wand projectiles didn't work correctly on non-enemy objects. So that's a little minor tweak there, that's good. Fixed some cases where hitting the heads of enemies with arrows resulted in too little damage values. Again, that's going to be a really nice quality of life for archer players. The game now prohibits using the fast travel function when falling. You can't magic your way out of gravity. That's great. Fixed an issue where interaction prompts were shown even though the interaction wasn't available. For example, when sleeping. Fix an issue when players could sit and regenerate stamina when falling. Improved the jumping behavior while sliding down mud slopes. The player now has stronger forward momentum. That's going to be fun to play with. Fixed several issues where the glider would be triggered unintentionally when trying to jump. Fixed a glitch that allowed getting catapulted into the air at beds. I never saw that, but that sounds hilarious. Fixed a glitch where the player could gain altitude by entering and canceling the glider, not a seagull. Fixed a stamina issue with the hawk boots. 
The game now shows correct numbers when the player gains mana or stamina. Being affected by damage over time doesn't cancel the grappling hook, climbing walls and the glider anymore. Discrete hits still do. This will come in handy for dungeons, just saying. Fixed several clipping issues for armor pieces. Salvaging high rarity items in chests now works correctly. On to the game world. Ground fog is no longer appearing in the player base, as the area is protected by the flame. Fixed minor issues with floating objects or other similar visual glitches in points of interest. Fixed an incorrect appearance and recipes for the desert flower. New music playlist for Pike's Mead Reach. New music playlist for combat in shroud areas. And several areas with ambient sounds has been fixed. This is great to hear. I know that for me, I definitely experienced a lot of these music and sound bugs, so I'm really happy to see these fixes. Fixed an issue with the doors and spires when teleporting away and returning while halfway through the process. Flame Shrines now have a small ambient flame to indicate that the flame will regrow over time when the spark has been connected. Fixed a quest marker near the southern caravan area that remained as a question mark even after exploring the area. Crafting, building, and terraforming. The visualization of the borders of the player base now works better with combined areas of several flame altars and in cases where no build areas are intersecting into the base. This is a really nice change and it sounds to me like it's going to make things a little bit more readable when we're trying to establish the, I guess, building limits of our bases, so that's really cool. Fixed an issue that terrain voxel would sometimes become transparent when building too close to the upper limit of the playable area. Updated some fireplaces that didn't offer the option of cooking or didn't give warmth when resting. Fixed another instance of incorrectly saving growth state of plants such as berry bushes in the player base. Added a quest for the spinning wheel to increase the visibility of the workstation. It is now possible to craft flower soil with Emily. Flower soil lets flowers grow faster than regular soil. This is going to be really good and really efficient for people trying to farm stuff, I bet. Improved alignment of several double doors to better fit into the voxel grid. Fixed a rare issue where build building shapes could be placed in a way that made it impossible to dismantle them as a whole. I'm so happy I never ran into this bug, that sounds terrible. Fixed an issue where it was possible to build in margins of certain no build and no save zones. Hardwood is now used in additional recipes. That's gonna be another really great quality of life change there. Fixed an issue where objects could be dismantled inadvertently through walls, while at the same time interfering with seating placement. Gardening shouldn't be a home wrecker. Yeah, that is true. Allow undo function while building hammer is selected, but building menu is closed. And fixed an issue where terraforming VFX were missing in certain situations. On to user interface. So the character details screen has been updated and many stats have been improved or renamed to add more clarity about gameplay effects. They have reduced the visual clutter of enemies and enemy health bars. Player health bars will only show up when players receive damage. Damage numbers are only shown per player. Enemy stun bar is hidden when the value is zero. For critter type enemies, the health bar has been hidden unless they receive damage. So this is gonna be really helpful to, I guess, just get rid of all this stuff on the screen, make things more readable. Damage numbers on enemies are now shown closer to the health bar. Mana gain is now shown as values similar to health. Stamina gain is always displayed even if the stamina is consumed. Fixed several typos or text inconsistencies brought up by the community. The current server load is now currently showing when players are alone on a dedicated server. Tweaked the custom map marker menu. Fixed an issue with location icons vanishing on the world map. Previously affected by save games will get fixed after saving and reloading once. And that's a really good rule of thumb. Whenever you guys are running into bugs, always just reload the game. Fixed cases where drop down menus would exit the screen if opened too close to the screen border. Improved wording on several error messages. Disabled the Please Update Graphics video card message for older AMD graphics cards. Restored the charging process indicator for staff spells. Fixed an issue for very long passwords in multiplayer sessions. And they fixed several items that did not lose the new marker after selecting them. And that is where we're going to call it for today. If you guys got this far in the video, please let me know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel if you're new here. Also, let me know in the comments section which feature you guys are most excited for. And again, thank you for watching. I'm still solo, and I'll see you all in the next one.